What's up guys, Chris here with Cohesive Friendship Unit, just me today. It's time to do our Risk of Rain 2 Hidden Realms tier list. Every time there's a Risk of Rain 2 update, we like to update our tier list based on how the meta of the game has changed and based on the new character. Uh, we're going to be using four tiers, low, medium, high, and top. The tier list that you're going to be seeing now is for our Skills 2.0 tier list so that you have a vague idea of where we are going from, from our last tier list into this one. Uh, again, four tiers, and we are making this tier list based off of every possible scenario. So all the skills, uh, whether you're playing single or multiplayer, which items synergize best with which characters. So we are kind of taking everything into account. This is not a specific tier list for just single player or multiplayer or two player or four player, but rather this is a very broad strokes tier list for just an idea of how the characters exist in the game as a whole. And before we get into everything, uh, we will be doing a giveaway. Uh, it will be announced on the 23rd. If this video goes out after the 23rd, you can check out our community tab. Uh, at 2250 subscribers, we will be giving away the copy of the Steam code or Switch code, Xbox or PS4 code, whichever you prefer. All you have to do is be subscribed. Uh, again, more info on the community tab. And if you're curious what the game is that we announce, again, community tab. And you can check our game of the year video where we're actually announcing that giveaway. Okay, guys. So you've seen what we said for Skills 2.0. Let's start at the low tier and work our way towards the top. Uh, and I just want to say all the characters are pretty well balanced, I would say, in this game. Even if you're playing a quote low tier character, it's still very possible to succeed with that character. So let's start with the Commando. And Commando actually has moved down. Uh, the, the issue with Commando is, well, at a base level, Commando is very okay, right? Very middle of the road, very middle speed, middle health, middle damage, middle range. I mean, it's the kind of default character. That makes it harder to make that character excel as a team player and excel in any particular area with items. Uh, they just kind of get better, but getting better is not always great in this game like you it's it's really good to specialize in something and really take off in that where they're, like huntress can specialize in crowd control and movement uh and someone like loader can specialize in damage output and movement uh commando just doesn't ever really specialize unless you get the right items to make them specialize they're just going to kind of be okay at everything and I think this game at the moment really prioritizes certain specializations, which we'll talk about as we go through the tier list, but Commando never really achieves any of those. Uh, again, this character was on our mid tier for many tier lists, so we're really moving Commando down because other characters stepped up more than anything else. And next on our tier list is Multi. Multi is a, a very interesting character where they excel a lot in that they can have two active equipments, which is actually a huge deal in this game. They have a huge amount of tank ability, they can take a lot of hits, and they can deal a lot of damage, especially at a close range. All of this comes at the cost of mobility. They're extremely slow, Multi is extremely slow, and Multi doesn't have a lot of range with the exception of their uh, their alternate left click, that beam gun, but up close you have to be really close which makes you a high risk for damage and when you don't have a lot of mobility that really hurts the multi robot. And again this is this is just kind of the state of the game where the game really does encourage movement at the moment and uh, it, if, if you don't have the ability to heal like Multi does, then you better be able to move quickly or not take damage at all. Which, again, Multi is not a bad character, just weaker. 
And next on our list, we're actually moving into the mid tier of characters. Uh, we have Artificer is actually moving up from low tier. Always have described Artificer as the glass cannon and the same stands here, right? Artificer has very good damage output, but not a great amount of survivability, not a lot of damage, and not a lot of movement. And the one thing that Artificer has going for her is the hover ability, which does make her more survivable, especially as the patches have come in and we've seen the new maps and the new map variants. Uh, verticality seems to be a lot bigger deal than the default four maps that we got, and Artificer can take advantage of that verticality with the hover ability, a lot of enemies have trouble attacking you when you're in the air. There's very few enemies that actually can land a very solid hit while you're airbound, and Artificer can really take advantage of that uh, when she can use the hover ability, and that actually makes her really good. So Artificer is in the mid-tier. Next is Mercenary. Mercenary is always an interesting character to talk about. Uh, people always have a lot of thoughts on him in the comments section. If you are a mercenary master, you can get a lot done with mercenary in that there are invincibility frames where you just won't take damage. And if you have the right equipment, if you have hardline afterburner, if you have some backup magazines, you can essentially stay airbound almost indefinitely while being invincible a large portion of the time, which we already talked about the benefits of that with Artificer. Mercenary has these perks as well, but can also basically be invincible with the trade-off being that Mercenary has to be up close and personal. That being said, Mercenary can do a pretty extreme amount of damage. I will say the detriment to Mercenary is not a lot of great crowd control. There is some crowd control where you can use your shift ability, you can use that teleport dash up to three times you can take care of a decent number of enemies if you have them lined up that is good uh, but you have to be up close and I think as we look at more characters you'll see that there are better characters that are good at being up close and that can handle crowds a bit better so mercenary always interesting to talk about uh, but we're going to put mercenary square in the mid tier now shifting over to the high tier we have the engineer to start with and engineer is actually I have I've grown to really appreciate the engineer more I think the engineer started as basically a top tier character when the game first launched basically dropped off into the low territory after scorched acres when healing was really nerfed and has since grown with skills 2.0 into this latest Hidden Realms update for a number of reasons. Basically, Engineer is extremely flexible as a character with the skills ability. You can have the stationary turrets and the walking turrets. The walking turrets are extremely good at doing damage. They have a very high damage output, and the stationary turrets are very, very good at uh, healing, obviously, with the bustling bungus, the bustling fungus, the bustling chungus, whatever you want to call it. You can heal your entire team, and healing, like we've kind of lightly mentioned, has been nerfed since uh, Skills 2.0. Uh, healing is very important and a lot harder to come by, and having an engineer with stationary turns can be extremely helpful. You can also synergize well with a player playing as Rex. Uh, where Rex does damage every time they use an attack or for a, a certain certain attacks so it can be extremely helpful to basically have healing funneled in also the shield can protect your teammates uh, who could who could need it very helpful for things like wandering vagrants or stone titans when you don't have any cover but those walking turrets like I said also extremely helpful uh, for doing damage if you opt to use that skill that makes engineer very powerful while still having that shield ability which is very good and the last thing I want to say about engineer is pairing engineer with Dio's best friend can basically make the character extremely good because all of your turrets have double the life uh, capacity which is awesome and next on the high tier is Rex uh, Rex is 
also a very interesting character, kind of like Mercenary to talk about, where Rex does damage to himself for most attacks, and healing is more valuable than ever in Risk of Rain 2. That being said, Rex got a buff in Hidden Realms where Rex actually heals faster with Rex's healing ability. So Rex has a lot of damage. Rex can heal. Rex is the only character in the game who can heal themselves by default, which is awesome. And Rex has crowd control, which is the first time we're really talking about crowd control in this tier list. And crowd control is extremely effective in this game, which is why you are going to hear about them for the high and top tier characters a lot. You're going to hear about crowd control a lot more. Rex has crowd control in that Rex can trap enemies and then do an insane amount of damage output. Uh, if you pair Rex with a cube, you can cube enemies to trap them, do a lot of damage with your right click. You can trap enemies then with your vines, which heal you and then allows you to continue to do a ton of damage. Uh, Rex is a very good character. There's Strides of Heresy, which heals Rex 25% and lets Rex be invisible and exchanges that kind of bad dash on the shift, which is is one of the few characters where it's an easy trade-off, where you almost always want to get that Strides of Heresy for Rex. Also, like we talked about, Rex can pair very well with an Engineer. Basically, Rex works great in single player uh, for crowd control and multiplayer when you pair with an Engineer. Also, damage and crowd control. I think Rex is a great character, and with the buff, even better. And now we're in the top tier. These are kind of what we think are the top three characters in the game right now, uh, in no real particular order because they are all very good. And we're going to start with Loader. Uh, Loader is a top tier damage dealer and probably one of the most survivable survivors just based on the movement abilities and the overshield. Uh, movement is extremely important right now because uh, it allows you to uh, evade base uh, attacks that could one-shot you, like things from a Wandering Vagrant or something. It allows you to avoid things like Malachite enemies. Uh, movement is very good. It allows you to move across the map quickly, which allows you to buy items. Don't waste time while you're hunting for things Well, once the teleporter is charged. It's, I mean, movement is essential in Rescue Rain 2, and Loader has the best movement. Also, one of, if not the best, damage outputters in the game, and that overshield ability, where while you do melee hits with your left click, you actually get an overshield, is basically broken. I would say the biggest detriment to Loader right now is, it's hard to tell if it's a bug or not, but when you use your charge attack, sometimes you don't go through enemies or bosses, and you get stuck on them. I guess in Risk of Rain 2, the most number of kind of janky, didn't feel like my fault deaths happened while playing Loader, and that's kind of a shame. Also, it does, it is worth mentioning that like Mercenary, Loader is basically all melee. Their R ability can drop a electrocuting field, but for the most part, you're gonna have to get up close and personal, and that is worth just noting. And next is Acrid. Acrid is the newest character in Risk of Rain, added in Hidden Realms. Unbelievably high damage output, very tanky character, much like Malti, uh, but much better movement. Uh, you can pair things very well with Acrid. Acrid acts as a hybrid melee and ranged character, which is the first of their kind in Risk of Rain. Acrid has two ranged moves as well as two melee moves and you can just do a lot of damage but if you need to escape to heal up or something it's also possible and poisoning enemies can bring them down to 1 HP which in a team dynamic can be very good for getting things down to 1 HP and then having something like uh, engineers turrets cleaning up. So Acrid, uh, very good, very good showing out of the gate. Poison is very effective. Uh, is, has a lot of hit points and is able to use ranged attacks which Loader and Mercenary isn't while getting up close and personal on the melee front. 
And last but not least, we have Huntress. Huntress was also top tier last time, and that has not changed. Huntress has very good movement potential uh, out of the gate with the teleport, fast run speed, and uh, just general speed combined with her other abilities like the raining arrows, and you can stall in the air with the right click. She's also the only character who can attack while sprinting, which is extremely helpful. And uh, there's auto aim, so it's even easier to attack while sprinting. Huntress has insane damage potential as well as great crowd control with both the right click and the raining arrows, the R ability. Uh, paired with a cube, Huntress is just insane. Huntress's Achilles heel is that she does not have as much health, but once you take into account the movement and the fact that you don't need to be up close and personal like you do with Mercenary as kind of a similar health pool, you can really make things work with Huntress in my, in my opinion. Great damage output, great movement to avoid damage and navigate the map, great crowd control makes for a great risk of rain 2 character. Uh, but that's our tier list guys and I think uh, the important trends to note are crowd control and damage output is obviously important. Healing is also very important but didn't make top tier this time where uh, both Rex and Engineer who kind of specialize in healing or defense made it to at least high tier and lower tier characters uh, really again aren't bad. They, their Achilles heels are just kind of too much of a hindrance to the point where the top tier characters are just better. Uh, but that's all for this tier list guys. Let me know who you think is best in Risk of Rain 2 down below. Let me know who you main. And that is all for me. I will catch you guys next time.